This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Last week, Belgian politics was plunged into uncertainty once again, as coalition talks came to a standstill. This has become a bit of a running joke in Belgium, as the country holds the world record for the longest time ever to form a government in peacetime, at 541 days after the 2010 election. Then, during the pandemic in 2020, Belgium broke its own record again, taking 652 days. Anyway, last week, the lead negotiator in coalition talks, the Flemish nationalist politician Bart de Weyfer, announced he was resigning after two and a half months, having failed to bring the five parties to an agreement. So in this video, we'll take a look at the turmoil in Belgian politics at the moment, why the country is struggling to form a government and what might happen next. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop when we release new videos. But first, let's go back to the recent federal election in June. To give you some background, Belgium's political system is super complex and power is divided between the federal government, the three regions, Flanders, Wallonia and Brussels, and the three communities, Flemish, Francophone and German. The regions are in charge of territorial issues like mobility, environment and housing, while the communities are in charge of language-related issues such as culture, education and childcare. This means that the country's political fabric is also a patchwork of different parties. Politicians elected from the five Flemish provinces in the north of the country automatically belong to the Dutch-speaking language group in Parliament, while those elected from the five Walloon provinces form the Francophone group. Politicians elected in Brussels can choose which group to join. Anyway, in the 2024 national election, the Flemish Nationalist Party, the New Flemish Alliance, led by Bart de Weyfer, won the most votes with a 16.7% share of the vote, followed by the far-right Flemish Nationalist Party, Flams Belang, with nearly 13.8%. In third place was the centre-right Francophone reformist movement, led by Georges-Louis Boucher, on 10.3%. Now, because the new Flemish alliance finished first, de Weyfer was allowed to form a Flemish government and initiate coalition talks on the federal level. His intended national coalition partners were the centre-right Francophone reformist movement, the centre-left Flemish Forêt party, centrist Christian Democrat and Flemish party, and centrist Francophone party Les Engagés. This coalition is actually known in Belgian politics as the Arizona coalition, as the five parties' colours are the same as the Arizona state flag. But since June, talks have stalled, largely due to disagreements over the budget's fiscal measures. Last Thursday evening, de Weyfer resigned as lead negotiator at the Belgian Royal Palace, telling Flemish public broadcaster VRT that it was without doubt the biggest political disappointment of my life, and saying, when you work day and night for two months and think you are close to an agreement with socioeconomic reforms, a reduction in levies and a way of tackling the deficit, and you have the impression that this is going to succeed, and in the last straight you finally get driven off the tracks, that hits hard. So what scuppered these negotiations? Well, as we mentioned before, the main issue is over budgetary disagreements, specifically a proposal to introduce capital gains tax on shares. For context, this is one of a number of proposals by de Weyfer to balance Belgium's budget ahead of a deadline on the 20th of September, when Belgium has to submit a budget plan to the EU that will save 28 billion euros, as the country is currently running a budget deficit representing 4.4% of GDP, far above the 3% permitted by the EU. Now, bringing down that level of public debt is a huge task for any government. So the package of fiscal measures suggested by de Weyfer includes some drastic changes, one of which is this proposed 10% capital gains tax on shares and bonds. Currently, Belgium is one of the only countries in the world with a 0% tax on capital gains, i.e. profits from investments and assets under certain conditions, making the country's stock market tax regime particularly favorable among investors. Another proposal is to remove the tax exemption on savings accounts. Under current rules, the first 1,020 euros of interest that savers earn each year is exempt from the 15% withholding tax, while other movable income, such as interest on term accounts and savings bonds, is taxed at 30%, although de Weyfer also wants to reduce this to 25%. However, these fiscal plans haven't gone down well with some of the other coalition parties. The leader of the pro-business, pro-free market reformist movement, Georges-Louis Boucher, is particularly opposed to this program, having called for lower taxes for the rich, whom he says are taxed enormously. Relations between Boucher and the leader of the Flemish Socialist Party, Voruit, Conor Rousseau, are also strained due to Rousseau's stipulation that he won't enter into government unless they agree to raise taxes for the wealthy. 
But as well as policy disagreement, the potential coalition partners clearly also have some trust issues. According to De Wefer's successor as lead negotiator, Maxime Prévost, details of De Wefer's budget were, quote, undoubtedly leaked by one of the parties at the negotiating table, which Prévost said puts pressure on trust and complicates the mediation task. As a result, Prévost has now said the parties need to, quote, get over their taboos and compromise, as Belgium, quote, cannot afford the luxury of a long standoff. So what happens next? Well, time is certainly running out, and the country has several EU deadlines that it needs to meet. First, Belgium has to nominate an EU commissioner by the end of this month, but more crucial is the EU budget deadline of the 20th of September, although technically this can be extended to October the 15th. So the renewed talks this week will be paramount, as the five Arizona coalition parties try to overcome their fiscal disagreements and settle on a new document. Prévost has so far seemed confident, saying that there's only one sticking point, presumably the capital gains tax issue, which he reckons can be solved this week. The next hurdle to overcome, though, will be choosing a prime minister. De Wefer himself hasn't given up hope on this, despite having launched a campaign for a third term as mayor of Antwerp, with local elections to be held on the 13th of October. However, there will likely be resistance within the coalition against a de Vefo premiership, as he's a self-described confederalist and a Flemish nationalist who wants more powers for Flanders, and has even suggested the Belgian state is coming to an end. So he'd obviously have a difficult task on his hands trying to convince the parties from French-speaking Wallonia to accept him as PM. Whatever happens though, at least Belgium doesn't have to worry about ending up in the Guinness Book of World Records again for the slowest government formation ever. At least not yet. Understanding these kinds of issues is really important, but also difficult. That's why TLDR is here to help you. Unfortunately though, the world's only getting more complex, especially when it comes to tech and AI. Now, I'm not qualified to teach you about that, but luckily Brilliant are. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in maths, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant is a learning platform designed to be uniquely effective. Their first principles approach helps you build understanding from the ground up. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, a method proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. For instance, if you did want to learn more about the increasingly important world of tech, you might want to check out the How Technology Works courses. That runs you through everything from how computer memory works to how exactly GPS can pinpoint your location or why some online videos buffer and how compression enables modern streaming. And although I did throw myself under the bus earlier, now I'm not qualified to teach you about that. Jack does have a degree in computer science, and he can tell you that these courses aren't just high quality, they're also far more interesting than the lectures I sat through. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash TLDR, or click the link in the description. That way you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription, and they'll know you came from us.